Hi everybody, join me in the world of American agriculture. This video will take you on an adventure to discover how farmers face challenges. It is fighting against millions of ferocious wild boars that invade crops during the harvest season. The most effective way to hunt wild boar is by helicopter, please follow Mouse Farm in the video below. Wild boar has a very high population growth rate, about 20-25% per year. That is due to these abilities to reproduce rapidly and these abilities to live in a variety of environments. Biologists and wildlife managers estimate that 60-70% of the wild boar population would need to be removed each year just to maintain the current population. Wild boars are large and intelligent animals. Adults can weigh up to 661.38 pounds. Invasive wild boars can move alone or in groups to forage. The moving speed is quite slow because there are many obstacles while moving. Hunting wild boar by helicopter in the U.S. is an exciting activity that attracts the attention of many people. However, the cost of renting a helicopter to hunt wild boar can range from 2,000 to 5,000 USD per hour. On average, wild boar hunting helicopters can fly at speeds of 100 to 150 miles per hour. Texas is a popular state for helicopter hunting of feral hogs. These places often have plain terrain, open forests and swamps, creating favorable conditions for hunting. The helicopter hunting adventure for wild boar is an exciting experience and an exciting challenge. Hunters will search for wild boars from above and then use hunting tools to take them down. In the United States, laws regarding wild boar hunting often vary from state to state. During hunting season, states allow wild boar hunting during a certain period of the year. However, some states allow wild boar hunting year-round with a special license. Estimates of the number of wild boars hunted each year range from several hundred thousand to several million. When a wild boar is detected, the hunter immediately informs the pilot, and together they fly to the animal's location. After getting close to the target, the hunter uses hunting tools to take down the target. Typically, wild boars are taken down from the back of the head or neck to ensure quick and effective takedown. The average range of view for a helicopter when hunting is about 750 feet. This means the helicopter can hit a target 750 feet away. However, there are hunting devices that can hit targets at a range of 1,000 feet. Therefore, hunting can be done in many different ways, requiring precision and skill on the part of the hunter and pilot.
When lowering a helicopter, the safe altitude depends on the terrain and the type of helicopter. Helicopter propellers play an important role in repelling wild boars and herding them into easy-to-kill areas, and the noise from the propellers also helps hunters easily detect them in the bushes. However, wild boars are often easiest to take down when they are moving or feeding, and open areas also make it easier for hunters to target. The number of wild boars that can be defeated each time can be from one to three wild boars. However, it should be noted that using helicopters to hunt wild boars has its advantages and disadvantages. This method allows hunters to access remote areas and can take down many wild boars in a short time. However, it also comes with high costs and can pose dangers to both people and other animals in the area. That is especially true when hunting by aircraft occurs near residential or natural areas. Therefore, caution and careful consideration are necessary before employing this method to ensure safety and protect the surrounding environment. Many argue that using helicopters to eradicate wild boars may disrupt the ecological balance. They help control small animal species, scatter seeds, and create conditions for plant growth. Using helicopters to hunt wild boars can cause environmental pollution due to noise, emissions, and waste. Noise pollution can affect water and air quality, helicopter emissions can pollute the environment, and waste from hunting activities can pollute the landscape. Using helicopters for wild boar hunting is often seen as inhumane because it can lead to the destruction of young or pregnant wild boars. Aid hunting wild boar by helicopter is an increasingly popular method in the U.S. because of its efficiency and speed. However, this method also faces many challenges, and the intelligence of wild boars affects hunting efficiency. Please comment on number one if you think the method of defeating wild boars by helicopter is effective. If you disagree, comment zero. Like and subscribe to the channel to wait for the latest videos. European rabbits, with their ability to reproduce extremely quickly, are an animal that has major impact on Australia's environment and economy. Within a year, a single female rabbit can give birth to hundreds of offsprings, and their ability to adapt to a variety of habitats has caused them to explode dramatically in Australia including in the dry Australian territories as well. European rabbits, with their omnivorous diet, have destroyed the habitats of many native animals, putting them at risk of extinction. The cause soil erosion and reduce agricultural productivity by digging nest holes and eating grass and leaves, reducing vegetation. The economic damage caused by them is estimated to be up to $1.5 billion annually, with about $1 billion for environmental damage and $500 million for agricultural damage.
Invasive rabbit epidemics in Australia have spread across the Australian continent, including arid areas such as deserts and mountainous areas. However, the hardest hit areas are those with temperature and humid climates where vegetation thrives. The largest rabbit hunt in Australia was held in 1923. This hunt was organized by the Australian government to control the wild rabbit population that was exploding at that time. In this hunt, more than 100,000 people participated, with the total number of wild rabbits caught reaching millions. This hunt has contributed significantly to controlling the wild rabbit population in Australia. Daytime rabbit hunting in Australia is an activity typically carried out in areas with thriving vegetation such as grasslands, the savanna, or the bushes. Australia has many areas that are ideal for this hunting activity, including the grasslands of the south and southeast with temperature climates, the savanna regions of the central region with arid climates, and the bushes regions and the east and the north with tropical climates. Daytime hunting of Australian rabbits usually begins when it is fully light. Hunters will look for wild rabbits, which often appears during the day, hiding under bushes or trees. When a wild rabbit is discovered, the hunter aims to shoot and kill the rabbit accurately to avoid causing unnecessary pain. Wild rabbits are then harvested to be processed into food or used as animal feed. During hunting, participants need to comply with Australian hunting laws, choose the correct type of hunting equipment and comply with safety rules such as pre-use inspection and use of hunting equipment in safe places. Respecting the environment is an important factor as well, and controlling the number of rabbits hunted each day also depends on many factors, such as the skills of each hunter, weather conditions, and the hunting area. It is necessary to ensure that this activity is carried out in a safe and a suitable manner avoiding negative impacts on the environment and other animals. Hares are often more active at night when they come out of their burrows to feed, drink water and breed. Hunting at this time can take advantage of their activity, reducing the risk of injury to hunters because they are less alert in dark conditions. Hunting rabbits at night increases the effectiveness of controlling rabbit populations. At night, hunters can catch more rabbits than hunting during the day. This method is often practiced by groups of hunters, using headlights to detect hares. When they see them, hunters will use hunting tools to catch them immediately. Each hunter can catch about 20 to 30 rabbits in one night. 
but the actual number may be lower due to the skills and the variety of hunting areas. Hunting rabbits at night has been shown to be effective in controlling invasive rabbit populations in Australia. According to estimates by the Australian government, about 100 million rabbits are destroyed each year, making an important contribution to efforts to control and protect Australia's environment and ecosystem. Although it can be considered a form of hunting, hunting rabbits at night is different from other forms of hunting in terms of time and method. This is a particular and effective way to control wild rabbits populations and ensures environmental sustainability. The use of hunting dogs and drones to hunt wild rabbits is also widely practiced using an airplane. Pilots can easily detect rabbits in a large area. This job can be combined with other jobs in the same plane, and no rabbit is missed. Using boats to navigate the swamps and hunt during the day is considered an effective method to face the challenge of wild boars. Although they are usually active at night, on hot days they can also appear during the day. Using the boats helps groups of hunters access flexibly and take advantage of the special swamp environment. Each day, a group of hunters can hope to catch approximately one or two wild boars. Although this number can fluctuate depending on many factors, including group size, hunter experience and density of wild boar in the hunting area. The use of hunting dogs isn't only an important part of tactics, but also helps hunters face the challenges of fleeing wild boar. Movements across the marsh grass is also carried out with the assistance of hunting dogs to optimize search and harvest capabilities. Boats also play an important role, helping hunters move efficiently and avoid the unique difficulties of swamp environments. Swamp environments are often quite difficult to navigate, requiring certainty and technique on the part of the hunter. The agility and ferocity of wild boars present a unique challenge, requiring hunters to be cautious and alert when hunting. In the state of Mississippi, the swamp rat population is a significant problem with an estimated 100 million animals higher than any other state in the United States. Swamp rats, rodents, often live in marshy and flooded areas. The ability to adapt well to the Mississippi environment has helped swamp rats thrive, seriously threatening crops and the ecosystem. Their food is diverse. They eat all types of trees and grasses around the swamps. Their population is flourished and Mississippi farmers took measures to deal with the swamp rat population. Swamp Rat Hunting
is the most effective control method in Mississippi, where farmers and hunters work together to maintain a balance between humans and the animals throughout the year. Rats can be hunted during the day or at night. They can continuously move on the water to search for food during the day. Farmers can use boats to travel across the swamp to look for traces for swamp. Rats, mice often move from the grass rows on both sides of the swamp and swim on the water surface. When mice are detected, quickly use hunting tools to catch them. Hunting skills are very important. When the boat moves on the water, standing still and accurately aiming at the mouse is a difficult problem. You really need to practice a lot before participating in the journey of hunting swamp rats. Swamp rats will be harvested immediately so as not to affect meat quality. Every day, the average Mississippi farmer can harvest about 10 to 20 swamp rats. Their meat is used a lot by people because of its unique taste and many nutrients. The carp is a popular freshwater fish. It's causing challenges for Mississippi farmers. Carps are believed to have entered Mississippi from Europe in the 19th century, when they were introduced for tilapia farming. However, they have quickly become invasive fish and caused many problems for the local environment. This fish is capable of living in many different environments, from large ponds and lakes to rivers, showing flowing dams and brackish water with low salinity. The carp populations are especially rich in Mississippi, with an estimated 100 million fish. These carps have a rapid reproduction rate, as each female can lay up to 100,000 eggs at a time and that has caused a sudden increase in the number of carps in a short period of time. To deal with this problem, Mississippi farmers have applied a number of measures, including using nets to catch these fish. They use same nets to catch fish. This net can harvest fish more quickly than using other methods. Fish are collected in one area, so the farmers will use these nets to catch them in a boat compartment. In addition, they also use long nets to catch fish. The net will be placed permanently at one end of the bank and stretched across the other end. After spreading the net, the boat will move and exert a large force on the water to make the fish move and get in the net. After about 20 to 30 minutes, the net will be picked up to harvest the fish. When the fish invasion was at its strongest, in about three days, farmers caught 96,000 pounds of invasive Asian carps. Once harvested, carps can be used for many different purposes. It can become a popular food source, processed into many different delicious dishes. The state of Texas, with its significant corn growing area, is facing a serious challenge from its feral hog population. Data from the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, shows that in 2022, Texas corn acreage reached 10.7 million acres.
it grew nothing, as approximately 1.5 million acres of corn have been targeted by feral hawks, accounting for 14% of the state's total corn acreage. They destroyed all the fields. The corn plants collapsed. They also ate a lot of newly planted corn areas, and the traces they left behind were terrifying. Their footprints and fur fell everywhere in the field. Texas agricultural markets are facing major losses, especially in the central region, where feral hog densities are the highest. According to estimates by the Texas Farmers Association, the damage caused by wild pigs to the state's agricultural industry has reached an impressive figure of $800 million in 2022. Texas authorities are working hard to control and reduce feral pig populations. However, this is a major challenge that requires close cooperation and creative solutions from both local communities and governments. Cornfield hunting in Texas has become a key way to deal with invasive feral hawk populations. Different hunting methods are used as well each of which is particularly effective in controlling and minimizing wild boar damage to corn fields. Hunting during the day is the most common and favored method. Hunters given access to corn fields use various types of hunting equipment to shoot wild boars. This is an effective way to minimize damage and control wild boar populations The first giant wild boar caught weighed 680 pounds during the day in central Texas in 2022. The value of this wild boar reached about $3,500. In newly harvested cornfields, or preparing for the growing season, airplanes can be used to hunt wild boars at this time, there are no trees covering the field, making it easier to observe and hunt more effectively. Twin-engine helicopters are the most common type of helicopters used for hunting wild boars. The twin-engine helicopters can carry more hunters and hunting equipment than single-engine helicopters. However, the single-engine helicopters can be used to hunt wild boars in narrow or difficult-to-reach areas. First, it is necessary to move high to be able to observe the area with wild boars, while reducing noise and impact on residential areas. After zoning the hunting area, Control the helicopter to fly low to approach the wild boars. With high skills, one wild boar can be caught at a time. Helicopters allow hunters to hunt wild boars more effectively than other hunting methods. Helicopters allows hunters to hunt wild boars over a larger area and more easily detecting wild boars. In addition, hunting wild boars by helicopters is safer than hunting wild boars on foot because the hunter does not need to come into direct contact with wild boars. However, Hunting wild boars by helicopters also has some disadvantages, as the helipads can be expensive and difficult to operate. 
In addition, hunting wild boars by helicopters can cause noise and environmental pollution as well. Why is the wild boar population is increasing rapidly in Texas? Let's continue watching the rest of the video to know more and more about this subject. The dingo, an animal believed to have arrived in Australian territory from Southeast Asia about 4,000 years ago, has quickly adapted and became an important part of the Australian ecosystem. However, in recent years, the dingo population in this country has grown dramatically, causing major impacts on the environment and economy. Currently, this number is about 200,000 to 300,000 animals, double the number a decade ago. Dingoes are a threat to the sheep industry and kangaroo populations. The attack sheep and kangaroos at night and during the day. Many cases have been recorded of significant numbers of sheep and kangaroos being eaten in one night, causing damage not only to livestock farmers, but also to the country's economy. According to estimates, damage caused by dengu dogs is estimated to be worth about $120 million per year. The unexpected explosion of Australia's dengu population poses a significant major challenge for researchers, environmental managers, and policy makers. The introduction of effective management measures to control dingo populations, protect livestock industry and animal populations, as well as reduce property and economic losses as essential to protect the wildlife. Australia's natural balance and maintain its biodiversity as well. The Australian government has introduced warning measures to reduce the risk of collisions between humans and dingoes, especially in areas where they frequently appear. Signs warning of the danger of dingoes announced that they are dangerous animals that can attack people, especially children. The Azaria Chamberlain case which occurred in 1980 in Australia, is a famous event that explores the mysterious disappearance of a nine-week-old baby girl during a camping trip in the Northern Territory of Australia. Lindy and Michael Chamberlain, Azaria's parent, were convicted of their daughter's murder and faced prison time. But after 10 years, a piece of Azaria's clothing was discovered near the dingo's den, and this was the secret that acquitted his parents. The case caused controversy, with some believing that Lindy Chamberlain killed their child, while others believed that a dingo was the culprit. The entire Chamberlain family suffered great losses, especially Lindy, who was accused of her daughter's manslaughter. These events have sparked debate about how dingoes are treated in Australia. Some people say that dingoes are very scary and need to be controlled, while others emphasize their important role in the Australian ecosystem.
The guidance provides details on how to respond to a dingo encounter, encouraging people to remain calm and leave the area safely. Self-defense measures such as nick and hit protection are also emphasized. Dingo dogs are widely distributed throughout all Australian states, except Tasmania. However, they are most concentrated in the northern and eastern states, including New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, South Australia, and the Northern Territory. They also appear on some offshore islands, such as Fraser Island, and Kangaroo Island. The Australian government has launched an important strategy, investing millions of dollars to build fences to prevent dingoes from encroaching. These efforts include not only the removal of old fences, but also extend to the construction of new fences with stronger technology and materials. The government spent about $10 million to remove old fences that were no longer effective. These structures are often made of steel, wire, or wood, have undergone deterioration and are no longer strong enough to deter dingoes. The total cost for this project is quite impressive, up to $110 million. States as New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, and the Northern Territory have actively participated in the program of building dango fences. These new structures are typically made of stainless steel or metal mesh. With a minimum height of 2 meters, these improvements aim to improve the fence's containment and tolerance capabilities while minimizing the risk of dango encroachment. Dingo dogs, a wild animal in Australia, have become a threat to humans and livestock. This situation has pushed the Australian government to introduce measures to hunt dingoes to prevent their invasion and protect the Australian ecological environment. The Australian government has implemented a dingo hunting program to control and reduce their population. According to estimates, the dingo population has decreased by about 20% since 2015. However, determining the exact number of dingoes hunted each year remains a challenge, making the effectiveness of this program questionable, so difficult to measure. The hunting program is only one part of a comprehensive strategy for dingo control. In addition to hunting, the Australian government has taken measures to trap dingoes. All of these measures need to be implemented and conquered to achieve maximum effectiveness and minimizing damage. Although the hunting program has helped reduce dingo damage to livestock, it is not a complete solution though. The rapid reproduction of dingoes and the population's ability to recover without other control measures are challenges that must be faced as well. In addition to the measures we have outlined in this video, do you know any of these measures and have you ever dealt with any invasive dingo before in your life?
Please, share all your comments and thoughts down below in the comment section. Thank you, and allow me to invite you to continue watching the rest of the video and explore a new land. Farmers and hunters were very concerned about hunting. Wild boars can attack them if they feel in danger. They gathered many hunters and hunting dogs to catch wild boars for each hunt. Each convoy started going to the forest to hunt wild boars. This pack of hunting dogs will be responsible for searching for wild boars. They will chase and attack if they encounter wild boars. Hunters will also feel much safer with the help of teammates and the support of dogs. They closely follow their dogs, who will split up into different areas to search for traces of wild boars. When discovering wild boars, hunters quickly run back and use hunting tools to catch them. It is not surprising that hunting with the help of hunting dogs causes the number of wild boars hunted to increase. The number of wild boars has also gradually decreased. According to statistics from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, hunting wild boars with hunting dogs is the most popular hunting method. In the U.S. in 2022, about 2.5 million wild boars were hunted with hunting dogs, accounting for about 75% of the total number of wild boars hunted in the U.S. There was a hunter who told a horrifying story, opening a new page in the world of hunting. His teammate had to face the attack of a giant wild boar weighing up to 600 pounds. However, the courage and solidarity of hunters helped them recapture the wild boar, turning it into one of the biggest trophies ever. This story spread widely and created a new fear in the hunter community. It raises questions about the insignificance of wild boars and their ability to deal with humans. Since this incident, many hunters have felt extremely cautious when conducting their hunts because they understand that in the wild world, danger can always appear from anywhere and anytime at any moment. To avoid being injured during hunting, the hunters came up with the idea of using tents and hiding places to hunt wild boars. It isn't difficult to find areas frequented by wild boars. There are many traces left by wild boars in the forest. First, we will go into the forest, approaching an area with the traces of wild boars setting up tents. This tent has the same color as the trees, so it can be used to hide most effectively. Tents can be used for overnight and camping right in the forest. Construction is quite simple. Just follow the instructions when buying them. Once the tent is set up, now is an important time to prepare food for the journey, to ensure that wild boars have the energy and nutrition they need. Building a food tower is an important step. This farm of food pyramid not only saves time, but also helps saving resources. Instead of having to spread feed directly onto the soil, this can be expensive and inefficient. Instead, Use a simple tower to spread even amounts of food throughout every moment of outdoor life.
With the tower's easy and convenient installation, you can enjoy convenient and efficient food preparation, ready for exciting journeys and experiences with nature. After preparing the grain tower for the wild boar, the hunters returned to their tents and began waiting for the optimal opportunity to hunt wild boars. This is a painstaking and patient process, requiring perfect concentration and control. With their shelter in the tent, the hunter uses binoculars to observe the surroundings and the appearance of wild boars. They know that every caution is necessary because wild boars have the ability to quickly to detect any intrusion. When the time came, the delicious scent from the food attracted wild boars from afar. They appear from the forest, coming in flocks, looking for food. At this point, the hunter is prepared and covers their destination. With amazing precision, they aimed at the wild boar's paralysis point, defeating them in the first shot. When wild boars are paralyzed, they immediately fall down and the hunt ends. The use of off-road vehicles of hunting is also very popular. You can drive on any terrain to hunt, which is much safer than setting up a tent. With the vehicle's shape, it can carry a ground of four people hunting together across flat areas. The chance of being attacked by wild boars is almost non-existent. The hunting trip went very well. Herds of pegs were killed with each use of hunting equipment. After being killed, pigs will be brought home for pressing. So the pig will be hung up and the processing process will begin. The pig skin will be separated vertically from the pig's tail down. After separating the skin, the internal organs will be also removed. Each piece of meat will be divided and brought into cooking. Almost all wild boar hunters in the U.S. love this dish. However, each person will have different flavors. The meat will be cooked for quite a long time. Wait patiently until you enjoy it. How wonderful! Each piece of meat is tender and very delicious. Have you ever tried the grilled wild boar dish before? Please, let us know about it down below in the comment section right now. And for now, let's take you to another area with more great things. Iguanas are native to Central and South America, and they came to Florida as much loved and sought after pit However, they were released into the wild. They did terrible things that made Florida farmers very worried. To control iguanas and reduce their impact, a new method has been used with remarkable success. Fishing poles with ropes. This method is simple and effective. Farmers and others involved in iguana control use fishing poles with long lines Capture results have been truly impressive with tens of thousands of iguanas captured each year. According to information from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Mission, this measure has helped minimizing the damage caused by iguanas to the ecosystem and economy.
using a fishing rod with a rope has many advantages. First of all, it is simple and easy to do, even for those without experience. This creates favorable conditions for many people to participate in the iguana control process. In addition, this measure can be applied in many different locations, including hard to reach areas, helping to expand the scope of control. However, it should be noted that this method can only catch a certain number of iguanas and is potentially dangerous to humans if not done carefully. Overall, even though the use of fishing poles has contributed significantly to controlling invasive iguanas in Florida and minimizing their impact on the region and environment and economy, Dogs are trained to detect the iguana's scent, and their task is chase and control the iguana when detected. This has become an effective method of controlling invasive iguanas in Florida. After the dog trainer approached and caught the iguana, the results obtained were of great significance. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has noted that iguana hunting has resulted in the capture of thousands of iguanas each year, making an important contribution to the region's environmental and economic well-being. This measure has many advantages. First, it can be used in a variety of terrains, including hard to reach areas. This makes it a versatile tool in controlling iguanas statewide. Second, this measure doesn't limit the age or size of the iguana. Whether the iguana is an adult or a juvenile, large or small, hunting dogs are still capable of controlling them. However, it should also be noted that this measure is indispensable without careful preparation. Do it safely and effectively. Well-trained dogs are needed. Furthermore, implementing the method of hunting dogs to catch iguanas also requires care, because if not done properly, it can be dangerous to humans and other animals in the environment. This places an important requirement on ensuring that the process is carried out by people with the experience and training. The iguana hunting in Florida has proven effective in controlling iguana populations. However, there are still limitations that need to be considered. The effectiveness of iguana hunting has been documented by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission through the capture of hundreds of thousands of iguanas each year.
this has had a positive impact on controlling the invasive iguana population in Florida. The main reason for this effect lies in the biological aspect when hunting measures directly affect the number of individuals in the iguana population. As iguana numbers decline, competitive pressure between them and native animals decreases while minimizing damage to the ecosystem and economy. However, iguana hunting also has some notable limitations. One of the important limitations is that this measure not only affects a small part of the iguana population, not achieving a significant level of control, Furthermore, it has the potential to pose a risk to humans and other wildlife species, especially when proper regulations and safety procedures are not followed. With the goal of improving the control of the iguana populations and minimizing the invasion of this species, research and implementation of variety of control measures, which may include a combination of hunting and other methods, is an important part of the ecosystem management and conservation in Florida. We do not recommend that you completely use the method of hunting iguanas because this method can cause pain to the iguanas. Other measures should be used to ensure that they are treated humanly. You can find the burrows, the dig and catch them directly by hand. Catching iguanas by hand will be an interesting experience for iguana hunters. Iguana eat agricultural products, attack and eat livestock. The holes they dig can be up to 80 feet long, threatening ecosystems. These measures have greatly reduced the iguana population. And lastly, don't forget to let us know your own experience if you have ever faced any of these invasive species around your area where you live and what have you done to prevent the spread of their population. Please comment below to let us know all your ideas. And for now, we invite you to continue watching the rest of the video. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below, plus don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.